Wow guys, it's been so long since I last did one of these uh, video tutorial thingies and so uh, this video is gonna be about how you can use plastic putty to make uh, things like gill plates and other other cool details on your lures. Uh, for me the easiest way to start is to use these stencils so that you can get the guide chips on your bait surface and uh, also doing it this way you can get uh, multiple lures done accurately every time and uh, this is the stuff that I'm gonna be using and to make the gill plates uh, on this trout shaped bait you kinda have to be careful not to get the stuff on your fingers when you when it's still wet and uh, cause it's kinda hard to get off actually <laughs> and trust me I know and uh, when you add the hardener uh, you don't have to put a lot of nits cause it does get very hard very fast and you really have uh, a certain window of opportunity to to use here and it does get hard very quickly usually two to five percent is more than enough so usually when I start I, I just put put a little bit on it not nothing too crazy at first and then just add it uh, bit by bit and um, I usually try to make it as flat as I as I possibly can because later on when we start to sand this thing this stuff really gets hard as a rock so it's it, it can be very difficult to to shape afterwards but uh, if you start to uh, work on it like maybe 10 minutes after after you it's been hardened it's still kind of soft so it's it's much more easier to work with that stuff so Yeah, like like you can see, I, I'm trying to make it as flat as possible, because it does help us uh, later on. So yeah, there you go, all done. Okay, uh, uh, now that the putty has hardened, uh, I can start working on the shape of the gill plates. Uh, and uh, like before, I've traced the shape with the stencil and with a pencil, just like uh, you guys saw at the beginning of the video. Um, I'm just going to show a small portion of the whole carving process, so that you guys can get the general idea how it's done. And because this stuff is so bloody hard, the clip would be something like five minutes long, maybe. <laughs> so, and really, I don't want to want you guys to bore to death um, oh yeah about the tools um, uh, the tools that I have here is are just uh, just regular few knives and um, a surgical knife set you probably can get them from most general stores and hardware stores and uh, they should not be too too expensive um, Mine were actually dirt cheap. I think it was um, something like 10 euros or something like that. Very cheap. And uh, yeah. It does kind of pay off, although, to have uh, really, really nice um, knife sets. Uh, especially um, the surgical knives that I have here are kind of crap. But then again, what can you really expect from plastic tools? <laughs> so, yeah. I would really suggest that you get uh, something more substantial than what I have here. <laughs> but uh, you really can get by with these things as well. So, but yeah, like you can see here, this stuff is really bloody hard. It's uh, almost like a consistency of um, some 
some of the hardwoods something like maple maybe or even oak but yeah Not much to say about the end process. So, I've now done the whole bait carvings uh, for the next stage, which is going to be grinding and sanding the gill plates well enough so that it's easy to make the final touches when sanding by hand. And I really can't stress enough the convenience of having uh, some sort of multi-tool to help you while grinding the gills. I think um, there's really no no need for expensive multi-tool the one I'm using here is probably the cheapest one you can get from a store and uh, of course it does really pay off also to have some so sort of uh, appliance to suck all the dust off while you're grinding yeah. I'm just using a normal vacuum cleaner here to get rid of all the dust because I'm doing this in my, my apartment but yeah, I think the clip is pretty self-explanatory and you guys probably get the get the idea from this and don't need to hear my babblings of this. Um, I think I'm probably gonna speed up speed up this this clip. Cause yeah, it, it might be kind of boring to watch. So yeah. Now that I've done the rough sanding, I'm going to start to do the final touches on the gill, gill plates. Um, usually the sort of sanding paper that I use is uh, grit 60, but I think it's uh, doable with an 80 or even a 100. The real key is, and uh, well, pretty much the most important part here is to make the surface as smooth as possible when sanding the plastic putty. And Try not to sand too much off while doing it, uh, although it's pretty easy to apply again, but it's it's always an ex extra job while you're doing it. And uh, of course, sometimes the contact might not be as good as, as the original one, but you really never know, because the types of plastic putty that there is on the markets uh, it, it kind of varies on in quality how good they are but yeah I think this uh, is pretty self-explanatory uh, like in the previous clip I'm just um, sanding it little by little and uh, always checking that that the uh, other side matches with the other side so that it's uh, nice and symmetrical and, uh, oh yeah This is what it should look like. This is the sort of stuff that you can do with plastic putty. And I really have to say it's a really fantastic material when you want to pimp out your homemade bait. But yeah, anyhow, if you have any questions, comments or critique, uh, just post a comment in the comment section. So thanks for watching and if you want to see more videos like this feel free to sub to my awesome channel. Uh, until next time, see you guys.